Hi everyone, it's Kevin from Armageddon Outdoors. I got a friend of mine's revolver. It was his father's, uh, and he passed away and gave it to him. It means a lot to him. So uh, the last time he was at the range, he was having problems with it. wasn't advanced in the shelves. Um, so you know, he knows I like guns. He said, "Here, would you take a look at this and see what you can find out?" Uh, you know, if he couldn't fix it, uh, he's just going to put it in a you know in a case so he can pass it down to his kids and. And go from there. Sorry about the uh, the heat. It is in Florida here. It, it's pretty hot. So let me flip the camera around here, and I will show you what I got. So as you can see, it's a Taurus 38 Special. It is unloaded. Um, I've already fixed it, so I should have taken this video before I fixed it. But of course, I wasn't thinking. So we're gonna take it back apart. I'll show you what I found, and we can go from there. So first thing we'll do is take the grip off. That's the easiest thing that I've always found. Careful you have this one little pin in here as well that uh, you know comes out. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll take the um, take the cylinder off. Got one screw there. Take that off, set it aside. I like to put it in order when I take things apart. Just makes it easier when we put it back together. And then kind of have to be, you know, just a little slow when you take it apart. Um, cylinder groove needs to line up with this side here um, to make it come out easier. Be careful that the, uh, the spring and the stop stays in there. So we set that aside. Now we have two more screws, as you can see here and here. We're going to take those apart. Now, if you look here, you can tell this is a the side piece is you know the side of the revolver here and that's a cast comes out you'll see that there's a line and it's kind of hard to see on the camera but you might see it now a lot of people would think oh just put a screwdriver in there someplace and pry on it and you know put it under here pop it off don't do that because even though it's you know steel it's still hardened steel so it's going it has the possibility of breaking so an easy way to get this apart is, I have my little armorer's hammer here, use the nylon end of it, turn it so it's down, and hit on the frame here. Just give it some taps. Now because of it's, you know, this is a smaller hammer, it's going to take a little bit. You could, but then, see, pops right off. Now, set that aside. Now, if you look in here, this has some oil in here because, like I said, I've already I've already taken care of it, put a nice you know lube job in it. So what we were having was this portion right here is called the hand, and that is what pops out in in the inner cylinder here or the inner frame and rotates the cylinder, hits the grooves on the back of the cylinder here. So what I found when I first took it off that this was very loose in here. I mean, it was just flipping and flopping. I knew that wasn't right, so got to looking at it, thinking, okay, the there is behind this, there's a pin, a long pin that goes down, and there's a, a detent and a spring inside the hammer, or I'm sorry, inside the trigger that puts tension on that to keep it forward. And at first I thought the detent is gone. You know, it broke, it popped out, somebody took it apart at some point in time and lost it. Well, that wasn't exactly the case. What had happened was it had gotten just over time, it gotten corroded in there. So I had to soak it. So now let me show you how to take it apart and how I found that. 
Now, I got two little pieces of wire. What these are are just a cut up paper clip. And what you have to do is you're going to take the tension off of these springs to be able to get them out of there safely. So you won't be able to pull the hammer back because there's no cylinder in there. When the cylinder's in, it actually pushes back on that little pin right there, which in turn pushes back on that catch, and that is your hammer safety catch with a spring behind it. So if you just push a little tension on it, you can pull the hammer back, lock it in place. Don't pull the trigger right now. I mean, everything should be good, but don't do it. Take the little wire. There's a hole in that pin and also in your trigger spring pin. Now, what you will do is, I gotta pull this one up just a little bit because I don't want it fast. Gonna apply pressure on the hammer, gonna pull the trigger to release that. Let that go forward. That one's gonna catch. This one back here. Again, gotta kinda keep it up there. They don't give you that much room. And that's gone forward. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of play in there now because it is taking all the tension off. Set that aside. Don't need to mess with it anymore. This one here you can pull out because there's a pin on the bottom that uh, rides in that hole right there. Set that aside. Now, with that done, you have to pull the hammer back just a little bit again because it won't come out because it's caught by the top of the frame. Little the frame comes over the you know top there and catches that. So if you pull the detent back or the release there, pull it back, there's no spring tension on it anymore, so that's fine. And then just slowly wiggle this thing. Wiggle the hammer out. that will pop right out of there and set that aside. Next thing that we'll take off is the hand. And again, just kind of have to wiggle it around a little bit and it'll pop out. So as you'll see on this, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but there is a short pin, long pin, long pin. This long pin is the one that rides against the detent in the spring um, that keeps the tension on it. This is what it actually pivots on. Goes in the receiving hole on the, on the trigger. And then this one is just a locating pin up top to keep everything in place. So now I'm going to pull the trigger out of there. The cylinder latch, just need to push that up out of the way. Um, that's what holds the cylinder locks it in place. And then this will pop right up. All this is out of the way, of course. Okay, so as you'll see, kind of hard to see. There we go. Right there, that is the detent. Behind it is a spring. It's captive. It has a it has a captive little pin in there that actually holds it in place. Wasn't sure at first until I started taking it apart and working it and found out it is captive. But when I first got this, this was almost flush with the hammer. Or, I mean, with the trigger. Almost flush. And, you know, saw some corrosion around it, and that's when I'm like, oh, there's the, there's the pin. It's there. So what I did was soaked it in some uh, penetrating oil, left it there for, you know, quite a while just to let it soak. And then pulled it out, tapped it a little bit with my hammer, uh, you know, with a little punch. Tapped it on the side here just to try to get it to loosen up. Couldn't get it. Finally had to put a pair of vice grips on the side of it 
slowly wiggle it back and forth and pull at the same time and that's when I got it to re release and now as you can see it actually it actually moves and that's the way it's supposed to be because without that the hand was just flopping around in there and nothing was keeping it pushed forward to hit into the frame to to the um, to the cylinder so now we can put it back together because that's as simple as it was back together is just how it was you want to make sure that the safety mechanism uh, it has a corresponding pin it's the opposite side of the hand it goes back in there so you can see it's it's in there correctly now the hand goes back into that pin get my fingers out of the way for you guys to see it a little bit but, uh, there we go so that's all that is right there now we can go ahead and put the hammer back in place again pull them back on that safety catch to give me that extra little room drop it into place and just wiggle this around wiggle the trigger around a little bit so it goes down into the groove right there so as you can see this is tight it goes back in place we're all good. Now springs go back in the same exact way. Put that in place first. Put the hammer pin in. Pull the hammer lock back. And you just need to apply enough pressure that you can pull your pins out. There's one. One has to go back a little farther, that's enough. And there you go. Now, putting the side back on, it doesn't just fall on flat. At the top of it, there is a little notch that goes in the corresponding area up here in the frame. So you have to put that in first. Drop that in the top first. Put it on, and I got it on my workbench right here, hard surface. Push it in as much as you can that way. Kind of apply pressure on it. Now I use my hammer again. And I'm kind of, you know, hitting up and down at the same time. Just nice light taps. Until it's in. And that's it. Simple as that. Back two screws go in place. Snug them down. You do not have to go crazy on them. You do not want to break a screw or strip the screw out. That would not be good. Cylinder again. Make sure that the pin is in there. Ring. slide it in place make sure it goes in all the way You'll feel it this screw you have to be kind of delicate with you don't want it too tight of course you don't want it too loose but you need it to be able to uh, function cradle. That's just a little too tight. There we go. Good. Now I can put the grips back on. I just leave the pin in place. It's usually easier that way. Throw it on there. That one on. Down, and we're good to go 
And if you notice, rotates every time. So thanks for watching guys, I appreciate it. Like I said, this is my first video, so I'm, you know, happy with what I did. And if you like what you did, or what I saw, or, uh, sorry, this would be bloopers at one point in time, you know, if this gets big. But uh, if you like what you saw, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, and hope to see you soon.